Hello, I am here today with Rick Rudder. Rick is a colleague of mine, someone who has an incredible story that can hopefully help you if you are managing hearing loss. Rick, tell us why is hearing important and what have you learned over your years managing your hearing loss? Yeah. Hey, Ben, first off, thanks for having me. Super excited to be here. I think for me, like hearing is critical to your happiness. I, I struggled with hearing loss for 20, 30 years of my life. And, and I finally found hearing aids in my, in my mid thirties and they literally changed my life. Um, it helped me connect with my family better. It helped me professionally. It helped me in so many ways. And that's one of the reasons that professionally I've, I found here.com and, and we're on a mission to, to make sure that people realize the benefits of better hearing and, and can help them with solutions. And tell us about your journey. When did you first develop hearing loss and how many years of trials, how many years of seeking help did it take for you to actually treat your condition? Tell us more about your own personal journey with this. Yeah. So, so I developed hearing loss um, in elementary school when I was in the third grade, I came down with a condition called cholesteatoma. And for anybody that, that is not familiar with it, it actually eats away at the, uh, some of the bone in your inner ear. And it produced, um, number one, like it was something that I had to have surgically corrected and, and, and fixed. And that obviously affected my hearing loss, um, or it, it gave me hearing loss. And so some of the, the things that came out of that is during school, I had to pay attention. I had to, you know, work rooms in different ways. And I really did struggle in, in school and in, in other environments. Um, it took a lot of effort to make sure that I did well in school and all those situations. I think, when I was younger and I tested hearing aids and tested some of those solutions out, it never felt right for me, right? I, I was an athlete. I was in school. Like I wanted, I, I was still young. I wanted girls to like me and things like that. Like wearing a hearing aid wasn't necessarily something that was cool. And, you know, I shied away from it. Fast forward to, you know, when I'm in my mid thirties and I have, I've got a wife and, and, and a child and I started to notice more and more that it was something that I had to fix and I had to address not only for my child's safety, but for my wife's sanity was to, was to actually go out and, and look for solutions. And for me, like I was pleasantly surprised that technology had changed so much. When I first was investigating hearing aids um, in the in the 90s, the the sound wasn't good, the form factors weren't great. You know, it just it 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 didn't give me the experience that I was looking for. A little bit more about me, my grandfather wore hearing aids and we were always still yelling, you know, grandpa, you know, like and trying to tell him stories. And it was really hard for him to to communicate. And and so I did have a little bit of those like you know, misperceptions on their effectiveness. But, you know, when I tried, when I tried my hearing aid out after, uh, after getting it for the first time and I could clearly hear my kids and I could clearly hear my wife and I could, you know, do, do a lot more like socially, it, it, it really did make a huge difference. Is there still social stigma around hearing aids? Do you find that that's changing? Is it on an individual personal level or what kind of experiences have you had with society? in that regard? Yeah, no, I mean, it's, I, I think there's still a, a misperception and there's, uh, there's still some like negative perception around what, what hearing aids are and what they offer. And to give you a great example, my father is in the seventies and his son wore hearing aids and worked for a hearing aid company and would tell him how effective they are and why he needs to get them. And the, the words out of my father's mouth were, son, I'm not that old yet. I don't need a hearing aid. Right. Maybe one day. But I'm like, dad, I'm watching you around the dinner table. You can't interact with your grandkids. You're having a hard time talking to me. Like, what's the big deal? He's like, son, it's fine. It's, it's, you know, I, I don't need it. I'm not there yet. Fortunately, I work for a hearing aid company and we were doing some really cool uh, trials for teleaudiology. And so I was able to ask my dad a favor. I'm like, dad, I want you to help me out with this project for work. We're working on something really cool and I need you to test this technology. It's brand new. I'm like, I'm going to send you a box and it's going to have hearing aids in it. And one of my colleagues is going to test your hearing. And I just need you to do this for me for work. Fine, son. It's for work. I'll do it. So we sent him the box and we tested his hearing and we fit him with hearing aids. And I got a call that night that was, um, son, you're right. I think these hearing aids are going to make a huge difference in my life. 
And time and time again, my dad will give me a call and be like, just thank me for doing that, um, for not giving up on him, for continuing to push, for tricking him into that hearing aid trial. And it really, it's made a big, big difference in his relationship with my mother, with his grandkids and with everybody around him. And um, he is a huge fan of his aides. Right. He's always, you know, talking about his aides and how happy he is. And, and he, he often says, I wish I would have done this 10 years ago. So that's just one personal story of, of this. And I think in the industry, we see it so much. Right. We hear it on the phones when we do consultations with our customers. We hear it when we when I talk to people on the street. And often it's these little things like, oh, my God, your hearing needs to connect to your phone. Like, that's so cool. And I'm like, that's just the beginning. Like you have no idea like what these devices can do. And so, um, yeah, the more we can do to educate people, I think, um, and help them see the, the potential for what their life could be like with just a little bit of help from yeah, technology. Absolutely. Right. So, yeah. Absolutely. And it feels good to be around people who are hearing well, whether I'm hearing well, that feels good to be connected to my loved ones, whether it's my family or patients that I've helped over the years in person via telehealth. It feels good to be a part of that. It's inherently human in our, our communication is what makes humans so special. Our ability to communicate and hearing speaking communication is everything to slowly lose that progressively over time. And then to bring it back can be a little overwhelming. How did that go for your dad when you had to, when he had to uh, acclimatize or adapt to all of the sound coming back at once, which we typically know can take about a month for an adult to re readjust to. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a challenge. Um, he, he's, he's interesting because he's not super sensitive and he's very positive. So for him, it wasn't, you know, that big of an adjustment. Um, I think for me, I remember the first day I came home with hearing aids and my wife and my, my three-year-old were so excited, dad, how is it? And I'm like, like it would like the, it was so loud. It was uncomfortable. Like I did have a hard time adjusting in the beginning and I never really realized why it was one of those things. My hearing aids actually sat in a drawer for a while um, because it was uncomfortable and it took me a while to adjust. And it is, it's something that you have to be patient with. And, you know, there's little things that are a little quirky about it or weird. Like for example, the sound of your own voice, you sound funny when you talk. But there's like reasons for that. And, and most people, once they realize like it's not just them, it's a process and it does take some time for your brain to kind of adjust to some of the, the new normal in a sense, it, it becomes a little bit easier. But yeah, to your point, it, there is an adjustment period. And I think that is another thing we have to help educate people on. Um, you know, real quick, it's one of the funnest projects I worked at at here.com. We actually created a hearing success program for people so that we could educate them. I'm like, listen, this is going to take about a month and there are going to be things that you have to get comfortable with on your journey to better hearing. And it's okay. Just be patient. Take your time. You know, don't expect to put them on and, and go, you know, running down city streets <laughs> because it's going to be a little uncomfortable. Right? You should focus on like, you know, maybe it's like a couple hours a day or, you know, wearing them at home in a more quiet environment and, and getting used to some of that so that you're prepared for, or not prepared, but just adjusted to what this, uh, what these devices can do for you. A hundred percent. The educational component here, if, if someone tried hearing aids out of the box without that context, no surprise, there's a higher likelihood for them to reject it or wait a number of years before trying again. Mm -hmm. I'm an audiologist, so I'm a big proponent of the professionals, and I know you are too, Rick, of the professional's role in this process, how this is a very human experience to regain this sense of communication. And that's what our profession is best trained in more than any other of how to use this technology with other tools and the right expectations to make that a seamless transition. It's important, right? What was your experience with uh, professional service for your hearing aids? Yeah, I mean, I wish it was better, quite honestly. I think um, it, I don't know if, here's the thing that I think is is difficult too, is your, um, I think that would be an unfair, you know, um, you know, statement too, because I think when you, you get these devices and you have so much new stuff to think about, 
right? There's so many things that are going through your head in the moment of you're trying on these hearing aids. You're like, wow, this is different. And you're adjusting to that. And you may be also getting some information on how to work the hearing aids and what to do. And this whole process, I don't think I comprehended that in the moment, right? I'm sure my audiologist was telling me more information and and a little bit of this, you know, what to do to be successful. But I was so focused on just having these devices on my ears and like trying to figure out what it was that I didn't absorb any of that. And so it is something where you kind of have to, you know, figure out ways of, of educating people in the moment or over time. And, and that can be a little bit challenging. Yeah. And you and I both work in the telehealth space. We both help people improve conditions like hearing loss or tinnitus with technology. And one of the benefits of the telehealth world and using digital resources is to have more contact points, more options for education, especially during the the toughest times of those conditions, whether it's the initial few months of an onset of sudden tinnitus, or it's the first month or two after someone tries hearing aids, right? Um, what have you learned over over the years with your role with here.com and how how adults are responding to the the technology component of this? Yeah, I think it's really interesting. I mean, you raised some some great points, Ben. There's there's ways for us to use technology and, and even communication to like improve the improve the experience. Uh, one of the things we do at here.com is we created this 30-day program, the hearing success program. And and it 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 doesn't have to be like you know, uh, like some crazy technology solution. Really what we do is we provide a lot of information over email that says like, Hey, based on, you know, where you are in the process, like here's some things to be thinking about, right? Like we mentioned, like in the early days, it's a little bit of the sound of your own voice, right? Like how to set those expectations and, and what to do. Um, you know, as you, as you're into like, you know, the second week, like, what other things can you go out and explore and really just get excited about, right? Like Mm. going for a walk and, and, and trying to listen to certain noises or certain sounds and like pick those up, you know, how to communicate better with people too. Right. And, And letting them know, like, it's, just because you have hearing aids, it doesn't mean all of your communication problems go away. Yeah. Tell us, tell us about, tell us about your experience with that. Even with the best hearing aids you have, what are the situations that still you, you, you need the people around you to know, hey, this is not perfect hearing. I might need some help here. What, what are those situations for you? Yeah. I mean, my wife still doesn't realize she can't yell at me from across the, the, the house and that I can hear through walls. Right. So like, for example, you still should be like, you know, be able to see someone and, and talk to them so that you can like have good communication. Right. I think that's that's one thing um, is, is still having like, you know, face to face contact and things of that nature, uh, making sure you have someone's attention before you communicate with them. Um, these are basics of communication. But like many times we, we forget these things um, over the years. But, you know, hearing aids aren't going to solve all of that. So it is just important to remember that, um, you know, there's some just basic things that we got to do to make sure we, you know, hear what what's being said and can communicate appropriately. Exactly. And what I like to remind telehealth patients of is, and, pay, and hear, hearing loss or tinnitus patients in general is, if you can get 5% improvement with this technique, 10% improvement with that technique, a few more bring them together, and you're doing a lot better than where you were a few months ago. And that these are, these are challenging chronic conditions that sometimes is not a quick fix. I tried this one thing and now it's back to where it was. Usually it's not, usually it takes more work and effort. And that's what, what we're all trying to do for Mm -hmm. the community here. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. I I think we all have to remember that like patience is we have to practice it. Right. And um, be reminded of it. Um, There's not always a quick fix. Yeah. Great to speak with you today. Do you have any closing words here for our audience on YouTube? And if you are watching here on YouTube, let us know if you have any questions below and Rick and I will definitely do our best to respond to those. Rick, do you have any closing words? Uh, No, I mean, I think that, well, yes, actually I do. Um, I think the biggest, (laughs) the biggest thing is, um, yeah, if you are, if if you have any questions, any comments, um, you just want to learn more, 
Uh, the colleagues in, in my team at here.com, we are here to help. We've got great technology. We have a very human approach to helping people address their hearing loss and, and helping you find the right solution. So uh, if there's anything we can do to help, please reach out to us um, here.com. Thanks. Thanks so much, Rick. It's been a pleasure. If you guys are watching this on YouTube, make sure to check out our other podcast episodes where we feature professionals, success stories, helping with tinnitus management and hearing loss. Thank you so much, guys, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you.